This episode brought to you by DoorDash, the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Also brought to you by Chime, the award-winning app and debit card that can save you money today. Come and see us this weekend at C2E2 in Chicago. We're easy to find, just walk past the entrance, turn left, and there we are. We also got some panels and we hope to see you there. the nostalgia critic guy, remember? All aboard! What? What's going on? You do want to see Santa Christ, don't you? Santa Christ? You kidding? No! He drops by here every year. If I really wanted to see him, I could make it happen. Well, that's a shame. I guess we'll go without you. A lot of people have mixed feelings about the Polar Express. You're not going to let your curiosity get the best of you. Oh wait, get the hell out of here! Well, luckily I slipped the editor 50, so... How does it even work? I edit these. All right, you are all the people in the world who are not sure if Santa Christ exists. There's only one other person on the train. Shouldn't it be a crazy high number, like 20? I don't question the magical yet inconsistent choices of the bearded one. Well, could you? Because this kid from certain angles looks a little uncanny valley. Just sit back and enjoy the enchanted journey of... Well, we're here. <laughs> Welcome to my home! Wow, the empty place inside of me is filling up! I simply cannot get enough! Yeah, 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 let's get a picture. Play some whimsical music. And smile charming but awkwardly at each other. Woof! What are you eating, kid? Next one! I'm sorry, so what was the point of this? I... Smile! Ah! Some music! Awkward finale! Am I facing you? Doesn't matter. Off you go. Well, wait a minute. That's it? Well, what do you expect? Our source material is a picture book. Pay at the front desk. <laughs> Remember this enchanted night. It was three minutes. I clocked it at two. I guess when you think about it, adapting a picture book isn't exactly the easiest thing. As much as I mock movies that do it poorly with dog ass kissing mom genocide or dirty hoes, I do acknowledge it is difficult to take a short story for little kids and stretch it out to 90 minutes. That's one of the reasons I think films like Where the Wild Things Are, Hugo, and Paddington I pretty much consider flawless masterpieces. Because not only did they expand on these incredibly short stories, but they stay true to the vision and themes of them. And not... Press it, <laughs> You do you. Maybe that's why, despite its flaws, I have grown a soft spot for Robert Zemeckis' Polar Express. Though now a staple for many around Christmas time, I was both surprised yet not confused about it getting mixed reviews from critics. The short of it is, they were distracted by the uncanny valley of the motion capture animation and felt it was too forcefully trying to become a Christmas classic. I. I don't disagree, but what the film gets right, especially when compared to other picture book adaptations, I think is worth giving high praise. I remember growing up with the story and really appreciated the film tried to entertain people the same way the source material did, rather than shove whatever slang, pop cultural references, or far butt humor will be dated in a week. That seems to be less and less with kids book adaptations, and I really think this film should be applauded for. But yes, there are clearly things that don't work. Yet, to the film's credit, they are interesting things that don't work. Whether you get into it or you don't, people love to discuss this movie. Like they enjoy figuring out exactly what it is that makes them enjoy it enough, or what it is that turns them off just enough. I'll admit I'm one of those people that loves talking about it, and that's what I'm gonna do today. So if you're ready to discuss what doesn't quite look right, <coughs> I said quite, not painfully. Ah, oh, maybe I should use some different CG makeup? Better? Leave. This is the Polar Express. 
First off, I want to give this movie credit for having the balls to actually be rated G. I know it sounds weird, but nowadays and even back then, studios thought a film had to be PG or higher for people to see it. So they'll add an occasional swear word or sometimes nothing at all to get it that PG rating. This film has more scary imagery than Inside Out, but it doesn't think your kids are pussies. I should also point out this movie was originally supposed to have Tom Hanks as all the roles. He does have a lot of them, but Zemeckis saw he was getting exhausted and scaled it down to motion capturing for only five, including the main kid and the conductor. I will say since they didn't go all the way with him playing all the characters, I think they should have just kept him as the conductor. The idea of a one-man show with CG animation I do find fascinating, especially in a story that teases this could all be a dream. But when it's not all him, you do notice the Hankisms more when compared to the characters that are played by other actors. I mean, the idea of getting other actors is to work off different energy of other performances, bringing in something new and fresh. But when half of them are the same person, you get a little too used to the same expressions and reactions. Even the designs look the same. Every character he plays has that tick-style chin, weird eyeliner eyes, and train whistle lips. This isn't makeup, it's animation. You can make him look however you want. Make him look however you want! With that said, I think he does do pretty good. Though Josh Hutcherson does the main character's voice, they work pretty well off each other to make this kid, named Hero Boy, by the way, <laughs> what, did you just watch Gordy? <laughs> seem like a believable onlooker who has a lot of doubt. It's like Big if Hanks and his best friend played the same role. In a PS3 game. So? And to hold everyone's presence, his sled would have to be bigger than an ocean liner. And yeah, I guess I should talk about the animation, as for many, it is the most distracting part. I personally think it looks great. For 2004. There's no question it's trying to go beyond what it's capable of doing at the time, and yes, they maybe should have waited 10 more years or so before trying this. But when you realize this came out the same year as Scooby-Doo 2, Van Helsing, and Garfield, you may cut it a little more slack. Ironically, the film looks better when it's trying to capture the surreal look and feel of the book, rather than the realism of human textures and movement they focus so hard on. The characters don't need to look real, they just need to feel real. And a clever stylized look can accomplish that. If it looked too real, I'd be questioning why the camera can go through glass paper or whatever this is. I think the film shines more when it tries more weird stuff like that. Hero Boy is starting to have doubts about Santa, but suddenly a mysterious train appears outside. I reckon we have a 50-50 chance at this. Sorry, even in a cartoon, I can't take Hanks' cartoon accent seriously. Every second I'm expecting him to go... Knock, knock. Go fuck yourself. He says because of the kid's doubt, he's taking him to see Santa along with a bunch of other children. Yay, we're being kidnapped! He discovers a girl named, how's this for original, Hero Girl. They sound like temp names for a Robert Rodriguez kids movie. And I swear the animation direction for her was, hey Frank, remember when Jack Nicholson played the Joker? Can you little black girl that? You know what, I should be thankful if Hanks was gonna play all the parts, this could have been a lot worse. Whoops, did I say she was the freakiest looking character? Do you know what kind of train this is? It's a Baldwin 284S3 class Berkshire type steam locomotive. Yes, I can read your thoughts and I am smarter than you. Can cross that off the list. There's something I love about this moment. Hero Boy looks at a store animatronic and is like, Daw, that's not the real Santa. I thought they captured him and displayed him out front like a zoo. You're a weird kid. We're heading for the other side of the tracks! I take it back, you're perfectly normal. YOU'RE THE BUTTHOLE CUT OF CATS! Well, you coming? They drop by another kid's house who doesn't get on. But when he changes his mind... Almost forming an expression. Hero Boy stops the train. Who in the f applied that break? He explains he did it to let the kid on, so the conductor calms down. Next, they serve the kids hot chocolate, just so every train ride themed after this movie can have some kid shouting, Why are they flipping and doing somersaults like in the film where everybody looks like Superman's upper lip? Where are you going with this? It's for him. Hero Girl tries to sneak hot chocolate to the kid in the back, but in doing so, she loses her ticket. It Forrest Gump feathers out the window, and it should be mentioned this film was clearly shot for 3D and IMAX, and... To its credit, it looked really good in 3D and IMAX. 
A lot of movies during that time looked like the 3D was added last minute, but this one not only looked like a lot of time was spent on it, but they went out of their way to make this a spectacle movie. Even if it's not as impressive on the small screen, the colors and backgrounds are still jaw-dropping, leading to some imaginative and beautiful landscapes, which is what CG really shined in at the time. In a strange way, the only thing to distract from the beauty of the Polar Express is what happens on the Polar Express. She didn't lose her ticket. I did. You can have my ticket. These are not transferable. One of the pros and cons to Hanks as the conductor is it always looks like he's about to shank someone in a scene. <laughs> No, it's nothing that crazy. They just climb to the top of the train to make their way to the front. What the fuck? Hey! I found your ticket! Now, I guess it's possible this is the shadow of the homeless man he discovers on top. If so, why did he take her to the back and where the fuck did they go? Did they forget there was an inside of the train they were inside of? And by God, how do so many animated characters survive the cold wearing the equivalent of a bath towel? Would you like to hear about movies? They're all the best I've ever seen in my life! Is this something I can do for you? Tom Hanks also plays the hobo, who's hands down my favorite character. We don't know exactly what he is, but they hint at him either being an angel or a ghost. Though this environment is already otherworldly, there's something even more otherworldly about him. That image alone of him making a fire on top of the train is pretty damn awesome. Hey, would you like some Joe? Nothing like caffeine to bring on hyperthermia faster. I own this train. Oh, yeah. It's like I'm the king of this train. Yeah, the king. Even when he moves awkwardly, there is kind of an excuse because he's a spirit. He would move a little different. With that said, even when he's imitating an animatronic Santa, it somehow still looks more awkward and fake than the actual animatronic Santa. <laughs> Screw the fireplace, this is what you should loop on your TV around Christmas time! A lot of the film is discussing doubt and faith. Not necessarily in God or religion, but really about anything important. I do like it isn't just a bland follow your dreams message as much as sometimes it's hard to know what to believe and there's going to be a lot of trial and error. Like they're saying, there are good times where you need to be skeptical. I want to believe, but... You don't want to be bamboozled, can't, or duped, hoodwinked. You don't want to be taken for a ride, railroaded! I used to watch cable news too, I know the feeling. Even the message of seeing is believing is almost contradicted with the most real things are the ones we can't see. Seeing is believing. The most real things in the world are the things we can't see. There are layers to the message they're getting across. Not tons, but it's like Fred Mertz cake. They're all in there. We gotta jump them knuckles. They have to get to the front of the train before the tunnel hits, so he uses a pair of ghost skis, I don't know, to get down there. Oh, come on, you call that filler? Jim Carrey would have had his head in a woman's breast by this point. That's how you fill her! Because he literally fills her, I just realized that. You! I thought you got thrown off and... He gets to the front and discovers Hero Girl, but the train starts speeding out of control. What about this red one? It looks like a brake! No, no, he said this was the brake! Are you sure? Huh? Are you sure? Are you sure it isn't the lever that says Blink character arc? The train continues to speed on the world's unsafest track, and it pretty much becomes a VR roller coaster. We're dropping faster than a presidential approval rating! It then slips onto the ice, and again, this can all be seen as filler, but it is a lot of fun. What more character do I need from these people? I got it. Go ahead and give me the stuff that CG is best at. Action and attempts to destroy Disney. Once they literally get back on track, all the children inside are presumed dead, and the conductor talks about a strange time when someone saved him from falling over. Someone saved you? Or something. An angel. Maybe. Nah, that's bullshit. Now let's go see Santa Claus. Mind your steps now. They're brought into a car that's filled with all sorts of forgotten toys. What are they doing here? It's a new concept the boss came up with. He calls it torture. Wait till you see what he has in mind for the one based on me. Speaking of which, I think this puppet is giving someone a woody. 
Oh yeah, I know what you are. You're a doubter! A doubter, you don't believe! You're a doubter! Still less scary than when Zemeckis had Jim Carrey do it. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, if you look to your right, you'll see DoorDash. It's right next to the What Do You Want To Eat Tonight Mountains. And just south of the Maybe You Want A Home Cooked Favorite But Don't Feel Like Going To The Store River. But as historians have pointed out, or you want something exciting and new, but it would be great to stay in tonight, DoorDash connects you with everything you want, whenever and however you want it. Those wacky historians. Our flight attendants are coming to your seats now to get you what you want to eat right now and right to your door with DoorDash. Along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. But not on a plane. This is just a sponsorship joke we're doing. Craving late night ice cream? Forget that one key ingredient for dinner or maybe you just need to stock up for the week. With DoorDash, get everything in one app. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeyes, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is easy and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code NOSTALGIA2021. That's 25% off and up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code NOSTALGIA2021. Don't forget, that's code NOSTALGIA2021 for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, term of supply. Uh, stewardesses will also be serving you a healthy dose of chime. When your online checking account balance is running low, the last thing you need is a $33 overdraft fee. If my voice sounds different, I totally didn't just take a break to watch a bad movie and review it for an upcoming episode because I am a pilot. Overdraft fees have gotten way out of hand. In 2019, traditional banks took $11 billion in overdraft fees. Chime does things differently. In your overhead compartment, you'll notice that Chime is an award-winning app and debit card that has saved its members more than $10 billion in overdraft fees with SpotMe Fee Free Overdraft. Eligible members can overdraft up to $200 on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with absolutely no fees. And get this, Chime is giving away $10 to the first thousand people to sign up for a Chime account using my exclusive promo code. Just go to Chime.com slash enroll and enter the promo code NOSTALGIA and activate your Chime debit card within 30 days of enrolling to get your $10. Now, go join the millions of people loving Chime. Offer ends February 28th, 2022. Check out Chime.com slash enroll to learn more. You know this isn't my real voice, just all pilots have to do this voice. My real voice sounds like this. <clears throat> Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bank Corp Bank or Stride Bank and a member's FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. Limits start at $20 and may be increased up to $200 by Chime. Chime member overdraft fee savings based on eligible members use of Spot me V. $33 average overdraft fee. Overdraft fee data based on bank rate checking account survey. NCRL June 2020 overdraft fees report. This was your captain speaking. Thank you for flying sponsorship air. Um, buy things. These things. So, we're about 45 minutes in. Why not suddenly make this a musical? The best time of the year when everyone comes home. Now I know what you're thinking. What? They had that song earlier! But that was a show being put on for the kids on the train. Like I said, they even do that on these Polar Express themed rides. That doesn't make it a musical yet because that could qualify in a non-musical environment. This is the first time someone is singing to express their thoughts and it comes right the hell out of nowhere. It'd be like Bruce Wayne singing halfway through Batman Begins because they went to an opera earlier. It doesn't count and it'd be distracting as fuck. And all the dreams of children once lost, will all be found. If Hanks is it, I'm just assuming you were looking for an Oscar already. It also doesn't help that it's not a very good song. 
It's not awful, but it's cheesy as hell and feels like they're trying to plant it as a song you'll sing with other Christmas carols. The best you'll get is children's recitals, and that's because kids kind of remember the notes when they fall asleep during the song. Look! The Northern Lights! Wow! We literally just saw reindeer and presents in the sky like God's Etch-A-Sketch! But this is the moment that impresses us, I guess. What's stranger than everyone singing 45 minutes into the movie? Everyone singing another song immediately after. Jesus, did I say the last one was a Christmas pageant song? This one you can already see kids in conductor hats performing. And you know for all that build up, the North Pole's kinda boring. It is neat that it's based around the Pullman factory from Chicago. But I'm sorry, this is a lame ass place to see Santa. It's so lifeless. This isn't where the elves work, this is where they're imprisoned. Even the music playing makes me think there's gonna be a character from Bioshock around the corner. The last kid on the pickup doesn't want to see Santa though, so hero boy and hero girl. Those names are so dumb. <laughs> Try to convince him. But Christmas is such a wonderful, beautiful time. It's a time for giving and being thankful for friends and family. And peer pressure. Christmas is about peer pressure. You saw what happened to Starbucks when they didn't change their cups. Hero Boy accidentally disconnects them because he wants to turn this into an Australian train PSA. And they end up inside one of the factories. You put them on a check twice list for next year. All right, boys, let's shut it down. All right, that's it for this year. Come on. Joe Pesci's finest performance. I'm shocked that this scene of them essentially going in a giant bank teller tube is also pretty forgettable. Say what you will, but the thrill ride portions of this movie were great. So riding in what every kid imagines riding in every time they visit the bank should be downright amazing. What do we get? It's like going down a McDonald's playground slide while watching 2001 on your phone. They accidentally end up in Santa's sack. Good night, everybody. And discover the geeky kid has followed them. Which, how the hell did he do that without being seen? How could you miss anything about this kid? I want to make sure I'm getting everything on my list. All I found was one present and all I had was a bunch of stupid underwear. Is mother not regretting hole and condom on your list? They get the bag to the town square and yeah, most of this is stuff in the movie you really could have cut. The bag is too low, so they get more altitude. The star is knocked over. Some elves save it. The kid doesn't trust the elf with his present. The elf does everything to convince him not to trust him with the present. It's in good hands. Trust me. See, we make waddles every year for you just to destroy it. Why? Because we can! Honestly, everything from when they arrive to when they meet Santa could have been majorly trimmed or completely cut, and you still would have met the theatrical runtime and missed nothing. Apart from the Christmas story kid sounding more like a duck fucking a goose. We got plenty of time. We got nothing but time. We got time to kill. Imagine if Laffy Girl listened to a compilation of him instead of her laid back music. And then we run what looked like a frozen lake, but I know it was just an optical illusion caused by moonlight and atmosphere. Because you can't put a train track- When Santa finally arrives, Hero Boy is dismayed that he can't hear the beautiful sounds the sleigh bells make. He finally admits he believes and can suddenly hear them. Just as one of the creepier Santa Clauses in film shows up. What was that you said? I said, ah, you're terrifying, ah! Let's have this young fellow right here. Santa picks Hero Boy to be the first child to be given a present, and the elves are hoping it's a wheelchair because I guess they think he can't walk. What would you like for Christmas? Oh, that won't be legal until... That will never be legal. The first gift of Christmas! Hero Boy asks for the sleigh bell, and no, I don't know why that needed to be whispered, he was just gonna announce it anyway. And Santa finally rides off into the night. Uh, that wasn't supposed to happen, folks. Well, best get started on the funeral. Why does his blood smell like candy canes? It's funny, for as hard as Zemeckis tried to make this timeless, it's like he said, eh, let me have one painfully dated thing in it. Lift your spirits, swing that girl, right on down the world tonight, yeah. Even though 
though this isn't a Weinstein production, I still feel like they stepped in for that joke. The elves all dance with completely blank faces, but when Hero Boy gets to the train, he discovers the silver bell is gone, falling through a hole in his pocket. Ha! You should have asked for a new robe for Christmas, dumbass! Gee, that's really too bad. Really? If I could clone you so I could repeatedly kill you, I wouldn't because temporarily that would mean there'd be more than one of you, but I would think about it very closely. For hours. The children are dropped off back home where they'll wait for their presents to be delivered. It doesn't matter where they're going. What matters is deciding to get on. So remember kids, when a stranger asks you in the middle of the night to go with them to see Santa Claus, do it. You'll have no regrets whatsoever. Wake up! Santa's been here! Santa's been here! The next morning, Hero Boy opens all his gifts and sees a special one from Santa. It's a lump of coal! It says thanks for dropping my bell, Ass Biscuit! No, it's the silver bell he dropped in the sleigh, but only the children seem to hear its beautiful sound. Broken. Huh. Sorry about that, sport. Teacher says every time a bell rings, a 3D animator cries looking back years later. Now that was the Polar Express. Awkwardly flawed, but I do find myself warming up to it more and more. When it came out, I guess I was more critical of it, and yes, all the problems people point out are true. But after so many lesser cheap adaptations of kids' films, I really do admire this one tried to pull as much from the book as possible. It was trying to be timeless, innovative, and memorable. And for 2004, I think it did succeed. The errors are very obvious though, in terms of the awkward facial expressions, which CG has gotten a lot better at. So if someone just can't get into it because of the uncomfortable faces, I understand. That's where you can get the majority of emotions from. For me though, it isn't just the faces. It's the backgrounds, it's the themes, it's the atmosphere and environment. That speaks to me just as much. And while those two aren't perfect, I still leave feeling, maybe not whimsically enchanted, but comfortably entertained. I still get that nice snug feeling you associate with Christmas while watching it. Like someone made a really well thought out production of some sort of Christmas play, but it was done with weirdly carved marionette puppets. Yes, that's distracting, but you still feel the effort. It may not be a masterpiece, but whether you're a fan or not, it's definitely an experience either way. Okay, critic, I tried less makeup. How's this look? I don't know where you live, but move further away. <laughs> Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. Every December we do this thing where uh, I play this old clip of me telling this Christmas story of something that happened that ties into a charity uh, when we were shooting a Christmas episode. So I'm just gonna do the same thing here and uh, yeah, obviously I'll go into what the charity is in that video as well. Take care. Hey everybody, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and I have a funny story for you. Uh, when we were shooting this review, we were outside about to shoot a scene with uh, Nostalgia Critic and Santa Christ and this car pulls up and they pull right into our parking spot and we don't recognize the people and they get out and we say, can we help you? And they say, uh, Toys for Tots. I'm dropping off Toys for Tots. No, 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 we're not Toys for Tots. And they're looking at us like, are you sure? And we said, yeah, we're sure. Why would we know where Toys for Tots are? And they said, well, cuz you got a guy dressed like Santa Claus there. Oh, no. <laughs> Un unrelated. Amazing. Totally unrelated. So, bizarrely enough, they were driving around looking for Toys for Tots, and we happened to come outside with a guy dressed as Santa Claus. What are the chances? <laughs> And I took it as a sign. So the charity we are doing this week is Toys for Tots. Uh, a lot of you have heard this charity before. This is a charity that gets toys to kids who are not able to have toys this Christmas. A lot of people donate in December, but for next year, it's good to know that they actually start in October and November as well. Uh, the more toys they can get, the more kids can have these toys. And these are children that 
either come across hard times or the parents come across hard times and are unable to get gifts. I mean, there are so many people out there that are just going through such rough patches right now and just are not able to do something that every kid deserves. Every kid deserves to have presents around Christmas time. And these are people that make it happen. It's of course done by the Marine Corps, but they also have so many good sponsors behind it. They have Disney, they have Macy's, they have Toys R Us. All these people try so hard to raise awareness and you see that poster everywhere of Santa with the Marine uniform in the closet. And if you even go to their YouTube channel, Marine Toys for Tots, you'll see that so many kids benefit from this and so many celebrities get behind this as well. And it's just a good cause because every little kid deserves presents on Christmas. And by donating toys or money to this wonderful charity, you can help make that happen. So whether it's donating online or just driving around until you see a guy dressed like Santa, please definitely take the time to look into it, buy a gift for a child less fortunate, and help them have a wonderful holiday. Donate to Toys for Tots. Yes! It's a good organization. Santa Christ approves.